Levi Strauss and Company. Let's look into it together and find out if it might fit into your investment portfolio as well as these jeans fit on its customers. This video, as always, will be broken up into sections. First, we'll do an opening move, then we'll gather facts based on that opening move. Then I will transition to unraveling the story behind the numbers. And finally, we'll call in the Sage Seeds AI, value investor wisdom distilled into a ranking. While you're following along, please try to guess what rank this company might get in the 2022 season. It is going to be the 46th company in the 2022 season where one is the highest rank and 46 is potentially as bad as it can get. Do you think it's gonna be in the top 10? Is it gonna be somewhere in the middle? Let's dive in so that your wisdom can blossom. Let's start off with the classic item eight opening move. Auditor alerting potential investors about all sorts of uh, recent changes in accounting style. We'll look at it if it becomes relevant. Now onto the balance sheet. Short-term investments, don't like it. Check out the uh, Nike video. We talked about why I don't like this in great detail in that video. That video is also a starting guide. If you want to get the most out of these videos, I recommend you check out the beginning. Inventory, not quite doubling, but increasing by roughly 500 million all in one year. Seems significant to be honest. Other than that, it looks like total assets is 1.5 total liabilities. Also in that Nike video, we talked about how 1.5 for a retail company is basically ideal. Great to see that it's not just Nike out there that knows how to do the ideal for a retail. Um, Levi Strauss killing it here as well. And it's one thing to know that that's the ideal. It's a whole nother thing to actually make it reality. And so good on them. Retained earnings has gone higher than 1.5 billion. Uh, yes, that would be billion. And so it's getting up there. I mean, this is definitely a sizable business. Moving on to the income statement, net revenues have increased by 1.6, 1.7 billion since 2020. Um, you know, that's really impressive, uh, but let's also remember a lot of these retail companies had very bad years in 2020. This could be more a recovery story than a growth story. Um, in fact, I'm willing to bet if we scroll down, yep, uh, net income was negative in 2020. And so this whole year should just be taken with a grain of salt. One thing we can see though, is that since then, cost of goods sold has risen by about 500 million, whereas net revenues have increased by 1.6 billion. So that is quite healthy. Nice, nice gross profit margins. Um, however, by the time we make it to operating income, these last couple years are about uh, uh, 14, 15% uh, operating income margin. That's more what you would expect out of a retail business for sure. It's retail, uh, it's technically healthy for a retail company. On to the statement of cash flows. They've elected to include all the changes to working capital into just one row. I mean, retail companies, their whole thing is managing working capital, right? It's it's creating inventory, in this case, clothing, different articles of clothing, um, getting that to places where it's sold and then making sure to collect the revenue from those sales. I mean, and I don't really get much detail when I just see it all in one row grouped together here. In fact, it looks like they spent quite a lot in increasing working capital in the last year. Uh, this is actually very significant, coupled with the fact that we saw inventories, um, let's just say roughly double, increase heavily. That's the conclusion of the opening move. These two things paint a picture of a lot of money going into inventory, but why though? <laughs> let's see if they have an explanation for it. As investors, we very much want to understand if there are potential mistakes happening. Maybe we'll pop in and look at a business description real quick in the notes to the item eight. One of the world's largest brand name apparel companies, it designs, markets, and sells either directly or through third parties and licensees. Jeans, casual and dress pants, activewear, top short, yada, yada, lots and lots and lots of things for men, women, and children all over the world. Their brands include Levi Strauss, Denizen, Docker, and Beyond Yoga brands. In particular, this Beyond Yoga brand was just recently acquired. So they don't break it down based on the type of product. They break it down better based on America's Europe and Asia. Okay, sounds good. As I was scrolling, uh, we found note two inventories. The change from 898 to 1.4 billion. Actually, they didn't even write a sentence <laughs> in this section. So it's not a very helpful section, but uh, at least most of it is finished goods. Um, instead of seeing that they've just been buying a bunch of cloth and raw materials. So I guess this is good. Let's keep looking. 
We mentioned the Beyond Yoga acquisition and they do give us the balance sheet of that company when it was acquired, but we can see that inventory was actually only less than 20. That leaves 480 million, which is not explained. And that that's quite a lot actually. So we gotta keep looking. Deep in a note called business segment information, another 42 million roughly is them saying, this is just the usual inventory that we need to increase based on how our segments are operating. We're still missing a lot. Um, and in fact, this is confirming in my mind that this is definitely not usual. This is definitely weird. Uh, we're missing about 440 million in inventory increase. That is an order of magnitude more than what this note is explaining would be quote unquote normal for them. There's something going on here, absolutely. We gotta keep looking. In the item one, they have a section called sales, distribution, and customers. Might help us think about what's happening. Inventory as they define it in their balance sheet, any piece of clothing in any store, whether it's a franchise or a partnership or their own store, is being counted in inventory. They have 1,089 company operated stores in 38 countries. Then they have about 1,200 stores that are franchised. Another 7%, 7 to 8% of their revenue comes from the e-commerce websites. Very, very cool that they're essentially a franchise company first, a retailer second. Didn't necessarily expect that. Lower on in the item one, they have a section called sourcing and logistics. In the subsection logistics, here they're explaining their reasoning, finally explaining it. During fiscal year 2022, a whole bunch of things, honestly, most of these kind of knock on effects of the, uh, of the pandemic, uh, effects of the post pandemic period, but things like port congestion, inventory delays, unpredictable lead times, labor shortage, led to them not being able to fulfill customer demand. They lost tens of millions in sales. That seems to have affected them quite a lot. In an effort to mitigate future lead times, they have intentionally received future season inventory earlier than typical practice during the second half of 2022. This is going to explain that increase in inventory that didn't seem to match up with business as usual. Um, they're saying a 420 million, nice, of inventory is inventory that they're receiving for the future this year because they're worried about not being able to fulfill all demand in the future again. This is a headache. This is hundreds of millions of articles of clothing that they now have to manage, store, uh, get all over the world, um, and it's hundreds of millions more than they would normally have to do. I mean, the whole company has to be definitely on their toes now until this inventory is sold and it's exposing them. I think we have all the facts to now unravel the story. Levi Strauss is not a usual retailer. They're a franchise business. Their priorities really are to make sure that their brand names and the customer experiences that people associate with these brand names be protected even at certain costs. They might now not be able to sell all of this. More importantly, they now have a lot more pressure on them if their models, which they themselves are saying are not typical practice, so this is not something they've been able to prove before, but whatever calculations they're doing for future customer demand are now under more pressure to be right than before. Significantly more pressure. Hundreds of millions more pressure. Hey, if you're getting more comfortable uncovering the stories behind the numbers, please like and subscribe. That is way worse if you're talking about 10% of hundreds of millions extra. As investors in this, we should be realizing that we have to have perfect execution just for this to not change anything, just to keep things normal. If there's any deviation from perfect execution, this will show up as costs to the income statement or decreases in revenue because they're gonna have to discount a lot of this inventory in order to get rid of it. Here they're saying it better than I am. Um, if they fail to accurately forecast consumer demand, they might experience excess inventory levels. It's a double whammy because there's an opportunity cost there and so it's twice as bad. You are missing out on selling a full price piece of clothing in order to sell a discounted piece of clothing. However, here they're saying the other side. Kind of have to appreciate, honestly. 
this is a franchise company and that's really the core point to understand here is that the number one priority is managing the customer experience, making sure that if you go to a store, you're going to be able to try on the clothing that you wanted to try on and that you're not going to walk in and see empty shelves because if someone takes the time to go to one of their stores in the next year and there are empty shelves, it's a waste of a trip. Customers will remember that for years. That will have a direct negative impact on their franchise business, their ability to license their brand names out to people who want to start up uh, their own retail stores. And so a tough decision, meaning that in the short term, there's basically nothing but slightly bad effects from doing this. They had to do it, managing the customer experience. So there are retail companies, there are franchise companies, and this one is both. But we gotta give them props for doing something bold. Um, hopefully it works out. Good chance that they're doing the right things, really at least their intentions are long-term, which is almost always the right decision. And they're not just standing by, um, they're actively recognizing that their brands have value. They need to protect that value even if it means going out of their way the next couple of years. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, trying to get it off the ground. I'm trying to continue to find the best way to package these videos. I'd love to hear what you guys think. In the comments below, share your wisdom, share this video. Levi is ranked 8 out of 46 in value for the 2022 season, making it into the top 10. Now, another company that I found a little bit difficult to pronounce and that started with Fennel just last week got this same ranking. And so here the new company is knocking Lennar, Lennar, <laughs> Lennar down a peg. I'm gonna to try to interpret what the Sage Seeds AI is picking up on. It seems like even though this clothing company is kind of a little bit less profitable than some other businesses, um, remembering most retail companies are, the value here and really the, the current price is seeming particularly attractive keeping it kind of high up in the rankings. Now, this is not investment advice, and a big reason for that is that this ranking is based on the price as of when I'm making this video, and you should not take one moment in time and generalize it. Let's keep an eye on how their inventory management progresses. Uh, their 2023 report will be coming in just the next couple of months. If someone's feeling the extra rambunctious, uh, it would not be an exaggeration to say that you could pop into your local Levi Strauss store and see if they're flooded with inventory. Well, after watching this video, you now know why, and that might give you a little heads up. You don't always necessarily have to wait for some of these more consumer-friendly companies. Just go to your local store and then and, and see if this story has developed in any way. That's the most accurate you're ever going to be able to get. Something from the Peter Lynch School of Thought.